Now let me tell you about my father. This guy is an amazing specimen. They don't make him like him anymore. He's an original. He's a classic. He literally just does things that people don't do anymore. When I was a kid, he was a truck driver. Okay, then he got into selling cabinets. Just basically did anything he could for our family to get by, paycheck to paycheck. He is my hero, my idol. He is this incredibly intoxicated right now, and he's a great man. <laughs> my favorite Tim McAfee story, and there are plenty of them, was this. So my brother and I were tight. We come home. I was like 13 years old. My brother was 17, and my dad is surrounded by cops out front of our house, right? <laughs> He's got high, high socks on, high tops, short shorts, shirtless, headband. He used to run triathlon, so he looked hilarious. And I go, he's from Pittsburgh, he has a deep Pittsburgh accent, and people that don't know what that is, he, like, Pittsburgh people just get lazy when they talk. We're just, so instead of down, they say Don, right? So it's just like, hey, I'm going Don, Tom, Donner, you know, what are you guys doing? Want to know if you want to go Don, have a couple cocktails, Donner, just like, words just flow, just like, no fucking spaces. <laughs> and my dad talks like that. So we show up and he has cops surrounding him. And I go, uh, and I'm a smart ass at this point, right? I'm old enough. And I go, oh, what's going on there? He goes, get in the house, right? And I go, all right. So I get inside with my brother and we're waiting for this whole situation to end. And my mom goes, so, uh, you want to tell the kids what you did, dickhead? And... <laughs> And my dad goes, yeah, I'll tell him I did the right thing. Yeah. And it wasn't me getting in trouble. It was somebody else. I want to let you know that. He said, there was a car speeding down the street last week. I caught its license plate. And I said to myself, if that motherfucker comes back again, I'm going to handle it. Right? <laughs> so this car came back, and I saw him, and I, he was speeding again. So I grabbed my bow and an arrow, <laughs> ran down my front hill, and I chased that motherfucker down, Pat. I said, Dad, Dad. Probably, right, in the grand scheme of weapons, <laughs> the worst hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon you could possibly have. And he says, funny you say that, because the guy stopped the car. Yeah opened the door, and I couldn't get the arrow into the bow. I go, you dumbass. He goes, the guy punched me in the face, but, but I kicked him back in his car. I called the cops on him. I go, that a boy, Timmy, you really showed him. He said, he ain't coming down this road again. So you're damn right, Dad. You're damn right. He really is just an original. My family is just the best. I'm so fortunate to have them. And, and my life from Pittsburgh uh, took a turn whenever I went to college to, to kick footballs. I was very lucky to get a scholarship to West Virginia University, okay? I never said I graduated from West Virginia University. <laughs> Not a once. But I went to West Virginia University, and Morgantown was a fantastic place. I can sum up my time at West Virginia University with one morning, right? Football was cool, but one morning can summarize my entire stay at West Virginia University from the years 2005 to 2009. Now, when I signed a scholarship to kick footballs at West Virginia University, I didn't even think about academics having to happen, right? Didn't even think about it. I signed a scholarship for football, not for academics. The fuck are we doing here, right? <laughs> True story. But what I learned quickly was every morning at 7.30 a.m. I had a class, right? 7.30 a.m., okay? I didn't make it much. Didn't, <laughs> didn't make it much. I slept in. I made a deal with the coaches. I said, listen, I will be eligible, right? At the end of the season for our bowl game, I will be eligible, but I can't make these classes, right? I mean, I got, a, I got this snooze button thing that just pops up every fucking morning, and I want to say no to it. I really want to. But fuck, I just hit the snooze button, I missed the class, right? And they go, whatever, as long as you're eligible and you're passing and your grades are good, we won't check your classes, you're cool. I said, sounds good. But I had to attend tests. 
So I never wanted to cheat. I never wanted to, I don't like cheaters. I don't like the way they work. I keep my balls fully inflated. I just don't like... <laughs> That was just too easy, that was too easy, too easy, too easy. No, but I don't like cheaters, right? So I would study for my test, I would just come on test day, that's all I would do, I would just I would study the night before test, cram everything in, memorize everything, and take the test. And this one particular communication final was at 7.30 a.m. So I wake up in the morning, the night before I had studied, had a couple of strawberry margaritas, woke up for the test, and I look over at my laptop, there's my laptop, right on my bed. Who knows what I was looking at before I went to bed? We don't need to talk about it, okay? <laughs> so I look at it, and there's an email in all red. All the other ones are in black. There's one email in all red. And it goes, urgent, all students and faculty in Morgantown, West Virginia, must read. So I go, uh, I should probably read that one there. So I click on it, and it goes, Attention all citizens of Morgantown, West Virginia. This past weekend, a circus came to town. An African lion escaped. We don't know its whereabouts. Just giving you a heads up. <laughs> a heads up, motherfucker? What? what? You give a heads up like when a road's closed or stop sign is fell, or a red light is off, but when Mufasa is running around a fucking town, <laughs> classes should be canceled, right? But they weren't. Class scheduled as is. I guess they didn't see it as big as a threat as I did, right? So I start pacing around my room, like, I know I'm probably overthinking this, but I'm not fucking going out from a lion attack. <laughs> in West Virginia University. No fucking way am I dying from an African lion killing me. So I start doing a little research, right? I need to ease my mind a little bit. I had a scooter in college, okay? Not one of those DUI fucking scooters that you guys have out here in Indiana. <laughs> I had a scooter because Morgantown, West Virginia was like this or like this at all times. And by about day two, I was walking, and I said, F nope, fuck this, get in a scooter. <laughs> so I get a scooter, it was a souped up scooter. I can't tell you how souped up this scooter was. It was the best scooter, best DUI scooter you've ever seen, okay? <laughs> Had a remote start. <laughs> Had an alarm. The whole kit. I parked that scooter at the pool, right? <clears throat> Put the kickstand down like a badass. Hop off that thing. Beep, beep walk away. <laughs> People looking like, does that fucking scooter have an alarm on it? Ain't nobody stealing a goddamn scooter, bro. Take it easy. So the scooter's max speed was 45 miles per hour, and I tell you that because on Google that morning, it told me that an African lion's top speed <laughs> is 50 miles per hour. <laughs> Now we're in a fucking pickle, right? <laughs> so I start pacing around my room. All my roommates are asleep. I'm going, I, well, I know my attendance grade isn't going to carry the class, right? I have to take this test. I go, 45, 50, 45, 50, Finkel, Einhorn, Finkel, Einhorn, 45, 50. It's a good call back there. That's a good reference. But, 45, 50, I'm freaking out, right? And then I look in the mirror, and I have an epiphany. And I go, Pat, this was a circus lion. So technically, it was an African-American lion. <laughs> which for sure is faster than a Caucasian lion. <laughs> but definitely not as fast as an African-African lion. So I docked 10 miles per hour. <laughs> All of a sudden, the scooter is winning the race with motherfucking Mufasa. <laughs> so I hop on the scooter, beep, beep, 
Get the class confident as a motherfucker, waving chicken in the air. Like, come on. I was going to be the hero of Morgantown. Kicker, Pat McAfee, finds lion with baiting chicken. Got to class, took the test, whatever, kept it moving. ADD, completely forgot about the fucking lion afterwards, right? <laughs> Go home. That night, 9 p.m., I get a phone call. I answer. It's my dad. He goes, hey, you got a lion donner. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, you want me to bring my bow and arrow donner and run that motherfucker down? <laughs> No, Dad, you stick to chasing cars, right? <laughs> I'll take care of the wildlife. <laughs>